الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الاحباب may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and forgive you continue on in our study of the treaties of Sheikh Abdul Masan Al Abad Allama Al Muhaddith Hafizallah Ta'ala Rifqin Ahl Sunnah bi Ahl Sunnah you know Ahl Sunnah uh, oh Ahl Sunnah be gentle with Ahl Sunnah so again this treaty is directed to the students of knowledge from Ahl Sunnah and the mashayikh and the general believers to be gentle with one another to be gentle with Ahl Sunnah not meaning that you should be harsh with everyone else in every issue but the point being is that Ahl Sunnah should be gentle with one another in dealing with one another's mistakes correcting the mistakes but leaving intact the honor of the individual Alama Al Muhaddith Sheikh Al Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Abad Al Badr Hafizallah Ta'ala said If speech occurs from a scholar from Ahlus Sunnah that is general and other speech that is more specific we should maintain good thoughts about that scholar by giving him the benefit of the doubt and understand his general statements in light of his more specific statements this is absolutely imperative that we begin to have a positive uh husnul dhan a positive stop being pessimistic so being optimistic with regards to our brothers and sisters in Islam in general but especially ahl sunnah that if you know a student of knowledge you know he's a soul you know that he is a person who studied with the ulama of ahl sunnah or studied from the jamiat where they teach the manhaj of ahl sunnah or the maraqis al ilm like in yemen and other places that are known for the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and propagating the sunnah of the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam uh and you know from this individual some of their statements you know what not just where they studied and that that they're a soul but you know specifically from them some of their specific statements and re- with regards to their creed and their manhaj but then you hear from them at another time in a lecture because of the slip of the tongue or because the particular time did not call for mentioning the specific details or whatever the situation that they say something that's mubhim that's general which happens to everyone and you can bring any tape just about you can if you want to research it and look into the statements of ulama and and suits of knowledge and duaat you can find some statement that someone can misinterpret but we know and we put that we put their statements we give it the best light especially if they're a person who's known for the creed of Ahlus Sunnah and having detailed statements which confirm or which affirm what they meant in their general statement according to the creed of and manhaj of Ahlus Sunnah with Jamaah and the sheikh mentioned with regards to he said the evidence of this is a statement of Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Do not think regarding a statement made by your believing brother except good as long as you find for it a good interpretation and this was narrated by Ibn Kathir in his tafsir of Surah Al-Hujurat so this is this is very imperative that we have a nas from the Quran and that we have a statement of a sahabi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in the second khalifa umar bin al-khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu with regards to this this very masala that we're dealing with this issue again let's hear what umar because i don't need to go into detail it's sufficient what he said radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal do not think regarding a statement made by your believing brother except good why can't we do this 
as long as you find for it a good interpretation. SubhanAllah. This also illustrates for us, ayyul ahbab, that sometimes our brothers and sisters don't want good. That they refuse to look, when, sometimes even when they know that the person doesn't believe this, but they'll say instead about a person's, either a general statement they made, or possibly a slip of the tongue or a mistake, but they'll say, ah, oh, this is proof he is Hizbi. This is proof he is Takfiri. This is proof he uh, supports, uh, he, is, he has issues in the madhab of the Khan Muslimin, or whatever, from a simple statement. Instead of looking at everything good that they've done and all the detailed work they've done in refuting those groups, then they'll say one statement that is general, instead of looking at all the tafsir, all the details that the person has explained the statements out fully in other, in other uh, lectures, in other sittings and gatherings, or is well known from the individual. This is what the Shaykh is referring to, that we take those general statements and we should make it, uh, we should understand what the person means based on their specific statements, not based on your interpretation, saying, ah, it shows that he means this, he means to support the Hizbis with this, he means to support the Takfiris with this, he means to say that he's really secretly with Jamaat Tabliq, whatever the case may be. But this happens countless times. That's the only reason I'm emphasizing it, because I've witnessed it countless times. May Allah forgive us and our brothers and sisters in Islam, I mean, and, and correct us, I mean. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, also said, it is known that the specific speech of a person is used to explain his general speech. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And his plain, explicit speech is given precedence to any metaphorical speech. And this was in Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah's book, book called Arad ala Sibti. Or Sibti. Ayol Ahbab, we just brought statements of the Salaf of this Ummah and statements of our more immediate predecessors like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahumullah Jami'an wa radiyallahu ta'anu ala sahabat al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that support this very powerful that deal with this mesela that deal with this issue go back to their statements it's not from me don't blame me for what you hear and don't blame the Shaykh say oh the Shaykh had taqseer in this no, the Shaykh has given you from the Salaf of this Ummah that you should have Husn al-Dhan. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? You know, have Husn al-Dhan. And he warned against Su al-Dhan. Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Iyakum al-Dhan, fa inna al-Dhan ahlibu al-Hadith. Beware of suspicion. For verily suspicion uh, is some of the worst speech. Wala tajasisu, wala tahasidu, wala tabaghidu, wala tadabaru, wa kunnu ibad, la yikhanan. The Prophet ﷺ warned us uh, spying about uh, uh, being hasid, having hasid for your brother and sister. Envy, some people have envy in the da'wah. Instead of seeking the reward with Allah Azza wa Jal, that they say, khalas, I don't, so and so's getting too famous. So and so's too popular. Look at all those people listening to them. As if it takes away from you. That should never take from you, away from you if you have a khalas. And that's why it, it's upon us, all of us, to always try to strive to uh, purify our intention and try to put husn of fun. That's why me, myself, just, just what I personally do because I've seen this from many ulama, I don't really spend time looking into the mistakes of others. I, I, don't, I don't have time, for one. Number two, I have too many of my own mistakes and, and I'm busy with that. And number three, you, how can you seek knowledge that way? How can you better yourself? How can you... Practice the deen really properly if you're busy with other people's mistakes. If it comes necessary to refute Ahlul Bidah, or it comes necessary to refute or advise your brother, then yeah, you do so. But to make it your life and your whole time and energy and efforts and your intention has to be correct in all of that. Meaning that the person who does spend more time refuting Ahlul Bid'ah and refuting and looking at those issues when it's necessary. They have to abide by the Sharia. They have to look at the Masla wa Mafsada, the benefits and the harm of the issue of refuting this individual. They have to look at the harms 
uh, that this individual pose, uh, poses to the community. They have to look at uh, their intention. Their intention has to be for Allah. It has to be to defend the religion of Allah. It has to be to guide that brother or sister back to the truth. Or it has to be uh, the other masalih and, and, and things behind uh, dealing with uh, why, how and why we deal with a mukhalif. Uh, so this is what's imperative for us, Ayyul Ahbab, that we have to have our intention and realize that uh, these issues are issues of religion and they require that we have sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jal. Everything requires, everything that's an act of ibadah. Remember, even when you refute an individual, it, it's an act of ibadah. So you better have it, your ibadah tight. You better have your ibadah sincerely for Allah Azza wa Jal. What are the two conditions for our, for our, our deeds to be accepted? First, ikhlas lillah. Athani, madha? Athani, mutaba. Mutaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the first thing is that you have sincerity to Allah. The second one is that you have uh, uh, that, that act of worship is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Alayhi afdal salatu wa salam. Those are the two conditions. Ayyul Ahbab. Know that speaking about these issues is an act of ibadah. The Shaykh said, Ta'ala, he also said, meaning Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, to learn and apply the legal opinions of the fuqaha from their general statements without returning back to how they explain their statements and without going back to their principles results in false misconstrued opinions. Allahu Akbar. Look how this has been dealt with hundreds of years ago. Hundreds of years ago these issues were being dealt with. But yet we, we bring them as if we have no precedence, as if we have no salaf to deal with these issues and these mistakes. And this, this, this way of dealing with one another from Ahlul Sunnah and general principles. These are kawaid. These are kawaid that Shaykh al-Islam is mentioning. These are principles of the religion. These are principles of Ahlul Sunnah. So Ahlul Sunnah has to abide by those principles. Look to the general statements of your brother and compare it to his specific statements. Give it the best, uh, the best, uh, uh, the best look. You know, look at it in the most positive way. Don't look at it in the most negative. You hear one statement or half a statement, half a line on a tape, and you run and you try to destroy his honor and his and his character. That's not that's not from Ahlul Sunnah. It's not from the Minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah. Show me where it's from the Minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah, and I, you know I invite anyone to give us. Where that's from the Minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah because we just read texts all the way from our Salaf that surely it's not. that That's the Minhaj. The Minhaj is that. Husn al Having positive outlook on your brother from Ahlul Sunnah. The person who abides by Kitab al with Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Have a positive outlook. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guide us and guide our brothers and sisters. Ameen. Then he also said, meaning Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, it is an obligation to understand the speech of a person by using some of it to explain other parts of it. His speech is not taken from just one source, but rather taken from a number of sources. It is also important to consider what a person usually, according to his habit, means and intends when using a particular word. This is also, uh, so this is in, in order to, under, you have to understand the context of what a person is saying. Look at these beautiful statements of Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Cutting off the head of the fitna. Cutting off the head of the fitna. As the ulama have done throughout time. And Shaykh Islam ibn al-Qayyum also mentions this about the sword of an alam. The sword of an alam is his ilm. And he slashes away. This is a general paraphrase of what he's saying. He slashes away at the doubts, the shubahat, and the, the, um, the arguments of Ahl al-Bidah. Just slicing their heads off. Zach, zach. Slicing the heads off the the uh, shubahat that the people of desires bring forth. This is what al al huwa silah. Knowledge is a sword. And that's why we need to increase our knowledge. Whenever someone steps up with that stuff, then we can deal with it. And say, no brother. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem. Qala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala salaf. La ilaha illallah. That's what we want, Ya Akhwan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us and protect us and forgive us, Ameen. I think we'll leave off there and we'll keep it very brief. And we ask that Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything uh, that was incorrect was from myself. Anything that was good was from Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me 
and have mercy upon all of us and all of our brothers and sisters. May Allah unite the hearts of Ahl Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the hearts of the Muslims in general. May Allah guide us all. May Allah forgive us all. May Allah correct us and rectify our condition and our affairs everywhere and guide the non-Muslims, especially from our family members. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them to the haq Guide them to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and may Allah bless us to practice what we preach with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Nabiya Muhammad wa Ali wa Sahbihi wa Sallam.